subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. As vaccines start rolling out for everyone above the age of 18 in India and the second wave continues to wreak havoc in the country, there's a lot of talk about antibodies, when they peak, when they should be boosted, when they wane, what the second dose does, reinfections and a lot more. So in this video, let's take a look at antibodies, our body's immune response to both vaccination and infection, why reinfections occur and when we should be worrying about our antibody levels. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. When we're injected with a vaccine or infected with the virus, our immune system typically kicks into action within a few days. The first kind of immune response that our body responds with is called the innate immune system or the innate immune response which is common among all animals and all vertebrates. This innate immune response is generic and it jumps in to respond no matter what kind of invader or pathogen has entered the body. This preliminary response includes a whole host of protections including physical or anatomical barriers such as skin, the production of mucus, the production of tears and stomach acids or even the blood-brain barrier. Then there are leukocytes or white blood cells that are involved in this innate immune response process. These include monocytes, macrophages, mast cells, dendritic cells, neutrophils, natural killer cells, and so on. This response identifies infection and wound healing, causing mast cells to release histamine and heparin and cytokines, triggering inflammation and dilating blood vessels. So this system is in place when the initial inflammation occurs in the body. Phagocytes like macrophages and neutrophils are responsible for destroying a pathogen by engulfing it. And then we also have natural killer cells or NK cells that are responsible for killing infected cells of the body. And we have dendritic T cells which play a role in what is called antigen presentation. All of these cells and these components are a part of the body's innate immune response system. Now what is antigen presentation? Antigens are foreign particles that the body recognizes as being foreign or belonging to a pathogen or a foreign object. They are a part of the physical structure of the pathogen and are typically found on the surface of the pathogen such as the spike protein on the coronavirus. This antigen's information is absorbed by the dendritic cells that are a part of the innate immune response and this information is then relayed to the adaptive immune response that is in the process of being fired up and which plays a more key role in the response to the virus. This adaptive immune response produces targeted personalized cells that are capable of fighting off the pathogen and the response is no longer generic. Adaptive response is carried out by white blood cells called lymphocytes. They are two main types and those are B cells and T cells. B cells play a role in humoral immune response and T cells play a role in cell mediated immune response. Humoral response is one where antibodies and bodily fluids are involved. It's the one where processes like pathogen elimination occurs. By contrast, cell-mediated response, which T cells do, is the one where cells are targeted. So this modulates the actions of macrophages and natural killer cells, etc. Helper T cells are the response mediators and direct other cells, while killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells are the ones that kill virus infected or even cancer infected cells. Helper T cells can also form memory T cells which are extremely crucial. These cells keep a record of the antigen that was presented to them and this enables the body's immune system to recognize this antigen and the pathogen in the future and immediately mount an immune response the next time this pathogen comes in contact with our bodies. 
Now helper T cells are also responsible for triggering B cells. B cells when activated produce antibodies which travel through the bloodstream and bind to foreign antigens. Antibodies are Y shaped and they attach to the surface of a pathogen all over crowding it. When they crowd the pathogen surface like that they send a signal to macrophages which then come and consume these pathogens. There are also memory B cells which are useful for inducing humoral immunity the next time the pathogen infects the body. Memory T cells and memory B cells are the most crucial part of the system. As long as they kick into action and they are able to function, we don't really need to worry too much about waning antibody levels. There are five types of antibodies that our bodies produce. These are IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG and IgM. Ig stands for immunoglobulin. Antibodies are either attached to B cells or are soluble in plasma. For COVID, there are two main antibodies of these five that we are concerned with and those are the IgM and IgG antibodies. The IgM antibodies are the first ones to be produced. They are produced about a week into the infection and their levels peak at about three weeks into the infection. The system acts rapidly but it's not great at eliminating a pathogen for long periods of time. It only does so in the early stages. IgM antibodies offer temporary protection as the body ramps up its production of the IgG antibodies. The IgG antibodies provide the bulk of protection and also make up about 75% of all antibodies in our system. They neutralize toxins and they bind to the pathogen. They are long lived and they decline very slowly and once produced, they can be produced again quickly the next time a person is exposed to the same pathogen. IgG antibodies are also the only ones that can cross the placenta and pass from a pregnant woman to her child. While antibodies do protect us when there is an infection in the body, they don't tend to hang around in our body forever. If there is no infection to fight off for a period of time, there's no need for antibodies in our system to continue to exist. So they wane and reduce in quantity over a period of time and for COVID we think this typically ranges from 3 to 6 months to 8 months. But disappearing antibodies is not a major source of worry like we said before. What we're majorly concerned with is also the cell mediated response and once we have memory T cells and memory B cells we can be reasonably assured that the next time the virus infects us, we would have an immune response ready to protect the body. Antibodies last in our system against COVID definitely for three months, but likely up to six to eight months. This is the reason why after recovery from COVID, they do recommend that you get vaccinated after three months since there is natural antibody protection meanwhile. But that said, there are reinfections. We don't know what causes reinfections, but they are still seemingly quite rare. In lots of cases, reinfections seem to be just mild, indicating a good immune response, and a lot of hosts are not even aware that they're reinfected. However, in some cases, Newer variants which have developed mutations that can evade detection by the immune system are seemingly causing newer reinfections.